Hi Crow and welcome to Queer Magic. It's so great to have you on the show because we first met in 1995. We did. Oh my god that's like quarter of a century ago and yes, we're fine. we did a ritual together which should be famous in the annals of rituals and <laughs> uh, and I was very impressed with you because you're a poet and, and a teacher and many other exciting things <laughs> and you were in the coven of one of my favorite people yes I and certainly was so yeah. it's been fantastic yeah. reconnecting with you again yeah great I'm really pleased to have you in my life again well thank, thank you very much I'm very pleased that we met each other again and we've caught yeah. up it's awesome Good. isn't that's one of the wonderful things about the internet is that it does that for certainly you is. yeah yeah definitely yeah ah, it's really good um yeah and it was all because I was I idly searching for as I do okay oh that was it because I was writing some blog posts about yeah. Wiccans from back in the day and I was googling for information about Margaret and right okay, and I yeah. stumbled across your your website and your Instagram yeah yeah and so I was, named my website and my Instagram after Margaret as a kind of honor to her because um I didn't want to use my name when I started the Instagram account, you know, my parents had just died. And really what I was looking for was a place to talk about my spiritual experience of dealing with the fact that my parents had just died. And I wanted it to be completely separate than any other social media I had. And I thought she won't mind if I borrow her name. And so I started as Margaret Inglis and that's how I started out so it's interesting because if you've not if you'd have been looking for me you wouldn't have found me you know oh, like well the, the awkward been... thing was that I couldn't actually remember your real name because <laughs> yeah exactly nobody I can. only knew it's you not was my real name anymore yeah it's <laughs> so I was like well, your real name. like to me crazy. crew is your real name <laughs> yeah no totally yeah completely. yeah and everybody else as well like there's like my sister is the only person now that calls me Claire. That's it, really. Yeah. So, but yeah, like, so you were Crow, and I couldn't even remember your last name. Um, yeah, so just Crow. Yeah, because you were just Crow, and it's like, how the yeah. hell do you find somebody called Crow on the internet? Yeah, exactly, exactly. You can't, can you? No, <laughs> talk no, about, I know what you mean. Yeah. Talk about secret. needle in a haystack. Yeah, secret. Yeah. Yes. So going back to that ritual in 1995. Yeah. yeah. Um, some time ago uh people who watch my stuff might remember that i did a, a thing about the two chalices ritual yeah and uh it all started because you and i were trying to do cakes and wine together yeah. and we were trying to figure out who was going to hold the asami and who was going to hold the cup yes um because there's like some traditions where the man holds the cup and the woman holds the asami and other traditions yeah. where the um woman holds the, the woman cup. holds the cup and holds the other they were like someone is going to look at us and decide that one of us and make a decision the man <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah. we were trying to figure that out and and i think i was so focused on that that if you did mention the words that you used in your group yeah i didn't realize well i've been thinking about this i can't imagine what else we would have used because that is what i think you use in cakes and wine do you yes. know what I mean? I would never occur to me to be anything else. Yeah. So I think we must have used those words. But right. I remember us being very focused on who held what. That was the big thing for me. That was, and that's how I came up with the idea of two chalices. Yeah. Um, based on the the temperance card in the tarot. Yeah. And so you know, you have two yeah. women, and one pours a, a chalice into the other. Yeah, and that's um, an active and, a, and an accepting movement as well. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And yeah. then obviously you could you could then do it the other way around. So it's more yeah. of a mirroring thing. Um, yeah. And then that developed because I took it to an LGBT ritual in 2015. Um, and and I was showing it to people and they went and then they just kind of spontaneously went, all right, I'm going to pass it to the next person in the circle. So then it just went around the whole circle. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, that sounds great. Yeah. Great moment of queer creativity. That was. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, fantastic. And somebody came up with the idea of saying, I fill your cup with love as well. Oh, beautiful. That's yeah. lovely. Yeah. So I didn't invent that either. Um, so I learnt uh, using when you're doing cakes and wine with a Thamy and chalice, I learned right. uh, as the cup is to the, uh, oh, I always get the wrong way around, as the Athemi is to the lover, so the cup is to the beloved. 
Uh, I actually learned that from someone else. And since we've traced it back and, and you've yeah. pointed out to me that actually that came from your group. Yeah, yeah. Because when I joined the John at Lucas Coven in Aberdeen with Margaret and Duncan, um, the first time I saw that ritual performed, I've got to say this, we had a guy in our coven who was a gay man, um, but I think he'd watched the cakes and wine ritual happen and he just kind of accepted that this is what happens and you just kind of have to adapt it in your own little head to make yourself fit in it. Yeah. And the problem is I'm way too bullshit for that. So, so yeah, so what happened was Margaret and Duncan did, you know, as the athemi is to the man, so the cup is to the woman and conjoins, they bring blessedness. Um, and I remember going, uh, what about me? Uh, where do I fit in in that Athemi cup thing? And they were like, oh, oh, yeah, that's true. And actually, where does Don fit into that as well? And I was like, yeah, I know, where does Don fit into that? And so we sat down and we had a conversation. And I remember saying to Margaret, I don't believe that polarity is defined by gender, because if it is, how is my relationship with my girlfriend working? How can it work if there's no yeah. polarity between us? And she said, I think we've all got all polarities inside us. I think, you know, it doesn't matter like that. And I said, so what if you and I were going to do this together, Margot? What would we say? And so then we talked a little bit about what we were really talking about when we said the man and the woman. And we were talking about a giving and a receiving or a passive and an active or and all these words. It seemed to be that lots of the words for the what we'd call the female gendered side of it, it seemed to be quite derogatory or had been used in that way so yeah. passive like i'm not doing anything do you know what i mean when that's not actually the case yeah so margaret because she was a scientist she said what about as the cup is to the beloved so the athemi is to the lover and i was like that works that's got you know, that love idea in it, but it's got the friction of the difference and also the implication that it could be the other way around. You yeah. know, we're not actually just talking about male or female or anything like that. And so we always use that. After that, that's what we always used. And so when I trained people, that's what I taught them. Awesome. Um, and so I think probably that some people who met Margaret and Margaret had done things with them, they probably heard that from her. You know, I know that everybody, like who I know, who practiced with us also used those words. So yeah. as far as I'm concerned, that's where it came from. And it Yeah, came absolutely. From I mean, that is that is certainly the, you know, because I, I picked it up in 2006 right. um, and I asked the people that I learned it from, where did you get that? And they said, oh, we got it from that person. Yeah. Um, and then you've traced back that actually it was definitely you and yeah. Margaret that came up with that yeah. Yeah. and that you must have transmitted it to the other person. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So and and now, more Margaret than me, she came up with the words and I came up with the, I've got a problem with this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I, like, in, I think about 2003, I started saying um, inner and outer. Right, um, yeah and that didn't quite cut it for me and then I, I heard lover and beloved and I was like well why the hell didn't I think of that yeah and it's uh, just not gendered it's just not gendered it doesn't have to be anybody and the thing yeah. is Margaret and I performed rituals together with no high priest and we could easily stand there with the athemi and the chalice and say that and it didn't make any difference yeah absolutely I mean my take on polarity is that um, you can make polarity with absolutely anything Completely. Um, and like you know Bob and I believe that our pol the polarity that we have with each other is actually nothing to do with the fact that I've got a female body and he's got a male body Completely. It, it, and it's just the same in my relationship I now live with a man and I am not any different with him than I was with my female partners um, it doesn't even occur to me that I should be and how oh. would I just change personality suddenly because of the gender of my partner that's just ridiculous isn't it well so, yeah it's really weird yeah yeah and and you know we talk about we laugh about the fact that um, you know um, he's a very nurturing caring 
sort of person. But if I wasn't here, he would probably do nothing because I am the let's go and do this. Right. Um, I'm the impetus and that. But then sometimes I run out of steam and he keeps us going, you know. So we and we swap and change as well, you yeah. know. Um, so I don't think it even you can't just say even in a relationship, it's this way because we no. ebb and flow. So I don't see why it'd be any different with magic. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I've been in situations where I've tried to do an invocation with a bloke and there was no kind of connection no, or spark no, going no, on. No, there's no friction. There's no so difference. No. Nothing yeah. happened. And I've done yeah. lots of invocations with women and also with gay men and all kinds yeah. of, you know, like everybody. And it all depends on whether you've got some kind of yeah. connection, tension, yeah. difference, yeah. whatever it is. Um, and actually, like even back in the day when the Kabbalion was written, which was written in 1912, Right. It specifically says that gender and polarity are not the same thing. Does it? Yeah. And that was written in 1912. Well, that's, there you go. And and that's what we were talking about. Like my coven, um, Duncan, my high priest, who initiated yeah. me, he was in Gardner's coven. So the fact to me that he didn't bring this up as an issue, didn't have a problem with it. Yeah. Um, you know, I went through um, you know, because I saw I told you about it, I went through all my folders and my book of shadows, um, because we I knew we were going to have this conversation. And I found the Yule ritual that Margaret and I did together, where one of us was the star goddess and one of us was the Kaliak midwinter uh midwife. Yeah. And everybody was birthed through the star goddess and there was and we used body glitter which i got in trouble for because nobody could get rid of it um but Duncan the only way to get rid of glitter is to burn your house down is it oh yeah god well i'm glad i didn't know that at the time because <laughs> that's a bit extreme and i may have suggested it um but duncan um turned up and said right so where's the ritual and you know we everybody turned up early so they could have a look at it and all that and he said i'm not in this and we said no and i was a bit like oh crikey and he went, no, that's brilliant, wonderful. I love being congregation. Great. I'm not even going to read this. I'm just going to experience it. And and for me, so when we've had conversations about, you know, inclusive Wicca, that's all I've ever known. All I've ever known is inclusive Wicca. I don't have an experience of having to worry about, um, you know, gender or sexuality or anything like that. And to, And for me, that comes directly from somebody who was in Gardner's Coven. So... Duncan was my benchmark. If he'd have been upset about it, then that would have been an indication to me that there was something different or tradition or whatever, but yeah. not at all, not even slightly. In fact, he was excited about it. Yeah, I mean, that's fantastic. And, you know, that's how it should be. And, um, I mean, this is why I always spell inclusive wicker with a small I. Yeah. Because inclusive, inclusivity is a tendency within... Gardnerian yes. and presumably Alexandrian. Yeah, it's not a right? name for a new sort of wicker. No, absolutely not. No. And like, no. you know, I've been very careful to say, okay, like, we're doing this thing and we're doing the same thing, but it's got this extra we twist on it or whatever, you know. It has to evolve. It has to evolve. Yes. Right? Well, you yeah, know, that, stuff that I doesn't evolve not... is going to die. Exactly. Or just become set in stone. As soon as you get a book and a man, then I think you've got a problem because other things happen other things happen and we evolve and we we recognize things that we didn't recognize before you know laws change attitudes change people open their minds to things and I think if you stop doing that you become set in stone and I think you die out well the whole thing about tradition is right tradition happens because I go hey we did this thing and it was great and it worked so yeah you know like yeah like for example and we might have done it four times so yeah. now it's a tradition that was tradition if you've done it like to my mind if you if you do a thing and it worked and you did it again yeah uh, then it becomes that's a tradition within your group exactly yeah but and you pass if you then pass else. it on to someone else and they go oh yeah that's a really good thing and yeah. they do it then it's then it's a more widespread tradition but it's yeah, exactly. like, yeah i completely agree yeah. yeah and also you know i'm I'm really excited like traditions don't have to be old in my book but no you know i'm really excited about the fact that we have now traced yeah the lover and yeah. beloved thing yeah back, back to, to your group in the early 90s very, very least yeah. yeah yeah 
absolutely and uh... and i and we talked about this before i started my own coven um when i moved from aberdeen yeah. and my coven was me and four other women yeah and i initiated those women and it never occurred to me that i shouldn't um and when i spoke to margaret and duncan about it they were excited to meet these people they very much looked at it as we were a daughter coven of yeah. John and Lucas. There was no implication that this wasn't really Wiccan or anything like that. Oh. I think that I think I think both Margaret and Duncan were the sort of people who didn't think that you ha always had to do something the same way all the time. You know, she was a scientist. He was a, 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 a he was a professor of computer science and anglo-saxon old english right both of them had a background in um exploring things mm. and that's the sort of people they were and yeah. they weren't this is how we've always done it this is how you have to always do it yeah. at all not even the slightest which is great and that's you know like let's let's try new things yeah new things. definitely definitely yeah. and i i always got the impression they were quite excited when i joined because i think Maybe before that, they'd fallen into that situation where the high priest and the high priestess write the rituals and, you know, and we've used up our imagination now a little bit. You know, we've done 17 Beltanes and, you know, so for somebody else to turn up and somebody who likes writing and, you know, thinks in a kind of poetic way to turn up and say, can I do this one? Yeah. And what are the rules? Tell me what the rules are and I'll write around that. And they were kind of like, well, there isn't any really. So we yeah. got to explore things, do you know what I mean? And it yeah. became a thing after that, that they they would encourage new people to write a ritual and take it themselves rather yeah. than oh, that's always be Margaret thing. and Duncan. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's totally my thing. It's like, please, for the love of God, write a ritual because yes. yeah. like, I then want I to experience to. somebody else's take on this stuff. And we both know now, we both know now that what Duncan was talking about when he said, great, I just want to participate. I just want to get something from this instead yeah. of being the person running the ritual. Yeah, absolutely. I completely like, understand that. Yeah. You know, I had um, uh, one, one group that I had, um, had a couple of people who were very creative um, and uh, one of them was a gardener. So uh, she would always include stuff about compost and worms Excellent. and- I love it. You know, actual yeah. gardening stuff. And I'm like- yeah. This great, great, bring it on. Yeah, because you know? the more metaphor you have, yeah. the more you're going to learn, the more you're going to go, I'd never thought of it like this. Mm. And that's the whole point for me. The whole Absolutely. point of having a coven is that you're a group of people who all think differently. Yeah. And so I I love that learning from somebody else, yeah. you know, how they look at it, thinking, I remember somebody did a ritual where they talked about Mart and the weird and talking about it being the same thing. You know, Ooh. this idea of the blueprint of the universe, how things should be. And I remember, like, mind blown. I have yeah. never, ever thought of it like that. And I love that idea. Yeah. So so you, I wouldn't have had that on my own. No. That's To me, that's what a coven's there for. Yeah, I mean, that that is why I still love, to, you know, doing, teaching people Wicca, because, yeah. uh, you know, my the way I teach is, right, I say what I think, the other people say what they think and then we yeah. all arrive at some kind of synthesis of what we all think yeah um and so like it's still interesting to me to go back and have a conversation about what is the sacred or why do we do the four quarters or yeah. what are the gods um yeah because people come up with different answers and i learn yeah. from them that's the best bit of teaching it's the best yeah. i used to have a thing on my classroom wall because my background is English teaching in schools. And it said, everyone in this classroom is a teacher. Everyone in this classroom is a student. And the kids would laugh about it, but it was true. And they yeah. were the best lessons for me. When somebody said something that I thought, hang on a minute, I've never thought of that poem in that way. Or do you really think Shakespeare? Oh my God, I never realized Shakespeare might have meant that. I think you're right. Oh, you've just erased 20 years of what I thought I knew. I love that. That's yeah. so much better. And you don't get that if you're sticking to some kind of imaginary set of rules, do you? No, absolutely. Um, and, you know, like one time I did a workshop where um, we decided to have the polarity be people who like Marmite 
Oh, perfect. And yeah. then we thought, well, rather than having the other side of the polarity be people who don't like Marmite, let's have something positive. So the other side of the room was people who like chocolate. Right. OK. So we all we all did this thing. So all the people who liked Marmite went off and talked about Marmite on toast with butter and, you know, the deliciousness of Marmite. And then the, the chocolate people went over to the other side of the room and talked about chocolate. A couple of people defected from the choc from the Marmite camp to the chocolate <laughs> camp. Anyways, so uh, so we made a load of energy based on based on yeah. the excitement that of our particular feeling. thing. Yeah, the and then we brought it together in the middle of the room. Brilliant. Now, and while we were doing this power raising, uh, the power raising thing, there was a car alarm going off in the in the car park outside. And it was like, and then the minute we brought the Marmite chocolate energy, the Marmite energy together with the chocolate energy, the car alarm stopped. Wow. I love it. I love that. But like, you know, Margaret and I doing our ritual together, we had polarity. She was a mother. I wasn't. Yeah. She was an old lady. I wasn't. Uh, she was Scottish, I was English. Yeah. You know, like there's loads of polarity in us because that's why you get on. If it was somebody yeah. who was exactly like you, you'd just sit there and be bored, wouldn't you? Well, you couldn't not have some kind of polarity exactly. with Margaret because be she was a real live wire. And, yeah. oh, you yeah, know, definitely. like, um, I I loved her to bits. And I thought An amazing she was to learn completely from. great. And, you know, like there was, she just had such a presence and a... Presence, a yeah. personality and a, you know you couldn't not have some kind of no. thing you know no. no and I remember watching her with people and thinking I have not met anybody who has brought up a topic that she cannot talk about in some respect yeah. like there was all she had something to say about everything the first time I ever met Margaret and Duncan I was terrified because I was going to meet them I'd uh, got in touch with the Pagan Federation and they'd put me in touch with Marga and I'd written to her because this is way before mobile phones and all that nonsense yeah. um, and I'd written to her and I'd arranged to meet them and I was very nervous that I was going to meet witches, real ones and when I got there Marga and Duncan were discussing what is the dye that they use to make kippers look like they're smoked <gasps> now. I think it's tartrazine, I think, but I might be wrong but I remember standing there and thinking, right, okay, this is not what I expected them to be talking about when I turned up. And they just joined me in the conversation. Do you know what colour it is, Crow? It's like that orange colour. You can't feed it to children. You know, and they just joined me in with this conversation. And But that was Margaret. Margaret was somebody who could talk to anybody and knew a lot about a lot of things. And so was always, and was always interested in what you thought. She was not yeah. somebody who wanted to expand her theory. And she wasn't a cloak flapper, as she liked to call people who were a bit pretentious. Yeah. Um, she was very down to earth about things. I remember somebody once saying, somebody new, I think, said, oh, and why, why is the red candle in the east and the yellow candle is in the south? You know, what significance is that? And Margaret said, Crow set it up wrong. <laughs> and I was like, oh. I did, didn't I? And she went, did it make any difference? No, it didn't, did it? Right? And that was it. Yeah. That was it. No, no, sort of, this other person learned something then. They learned that that candle there is a prop, that colour is a prop. And providing you stand there and you invoke the East, you're going to get air and the East yeah. without the yellow candle being in front of it. And that, for me, you know, scientists, you know, they're not uh, set in stone. They're about exploring yeah and um, asking questions and that's definitely what she was like so well, yeah, she's a great person to learn from cutting through the bullshit like completely yeah completely it was all about so it's great to learn from that because yeah you weren't going to get any fluff you were just going to get the truth yeah she was great so i miss cool. that yeah i miss that. i know yeah, yeah same um right so so uh now what else was I going to ask you about so um uh one of the things that i've been talking about with people in this mm -hmm. uh series of interviews is do we have a definition for queer magic which is a tricky one it is a tricky one i struggle with this because um i know somebody who told me that i was so queer that i don't even call myself queer um because it doesn't occur to me to call myself anything so for me, um, all magic can be queer. It depends who's doing it. In fact, 
I think people who aren't doing it in a queer way, whatever that means, it still is queer. They're just not using that side of things. Yeah. Right? So I think whatever it is, magic is, is so much bigger and more infinite than all of us that, you know, the more we learn about ourselves, the more that we will learn about magic. So, you know, now we're going to say it's queer uh, because we have this word now, which means kind of inclusive and non-gendered and non-binary and all that kind of thing. Um, but it's it's bigger than that. It, you know, we'll have to find another definition at, at some point in the future when we get our heads around the fact that queer doesn't even work now anymore. You know, people yeah. just are and that's how it is. Yeah. So I, I struggle with that because to me, it'd be a bit like queer cycling. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, it, I like that. it's just a, it's just a thing and yeah. um it's all dependent on the people practicing it and what they think yeah you know so you know i i wouldn't i don't call myself an anything really i'm a crow the box i fit in is a crow box um and that's as big or as small as i decide it is and it might be different next week so because and because of the way that i was brought up in wicca i never really thought about the fact that there would be a queer version yeah of magic no, well, because it just is anywhere yeah for my well my take on it is that magic is inherently queer yeah well uh, yeah it's, it's, that just, yeah the Venn diagram of queer and magic is like this yeah yeah no exactly there isn't one is there it's just a circle yeah i can yeah. that and and you know so um we were talking um when you sent me a message and we were talking about my favorite queer magic well i don't have a favorite queer magic book because i read every magic book with my own personal head on, which is pretty queer. So if I just I just write out the bits that I don't agree with, you know, I don't read any book now on magic to take it wholesale anywhere. You know, no. we've been doing this a long time and, and it's been a long time since I've read a book that I've actually read from cover to cover and got something from every chapter. Now I dip in and out of books Mm. Um, and I go, oh, I like that. I'm going to steal it. Or no, I don't agree with that. And I'm not going to read the rest of it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, because I've got my way of doing it now, and this is yeah. my way of doing it. So I haven't got a book, uh, a queer magic book, because every time I read a book, it now becomes a queer magic book. Because if I get to a bit where it says, and a man has to do this and a woman has to do that, I put the book down. Yeah. That's totally fair. No, I, I mean, I, um, I think, think like, it, go on. Yeah. No, I just think um i totally agree about not taking all the, you know if you took all the books on magic as kind of gospel yeah you'd end up very confused because very confused. they actually disagree yeah. with each other about stuff um well, but i think uh you know one, one of the things that has become apparent recently uh especially from talking to other people who've written books that are explicitly for a queer audience is that people say to them oh you're the first person to write a book on queer magic and that's not true because that you know yeah. i've got an entire reading yeah. list of stuff on my yeah. blog that like yeah. hey look at all this stuff that's been written exactly inclusive slash queer so you know because yeah. the head there are an awful lot of heterocentric books out there and i yeah. do yeah you know and because people used to say to me you know on joining my coven like what's your recommended reading what do you recommend reading and i'd always say well I'm not going to specifically recommend anything for yeah, the simple tricky. reason that it's all heterocentric, it's all duotheistic, yeah. uh, and I'm a polytheist and I'm queer, and I can't yeah. recommend half the stuff that's out there because it's all but heterocentric do you not do, what I do. do you not do what I do? Because I grew up, right, so my relationships from being, uh, what, 18 to 42 were all with women right mm. and people would nicely put me in the lesbian box and I never thought about myself as a lesbian but I just didn't care what people called me because it just shut them up and it made them feel safe that they got a box to put me in and I was like yeah all right then if you want and I'm also not the sort of person who when I'm in a relationship with somebody I'm not really looking at other people thinking do I fancy them so it never occurred to me to look outside of that so because I've been reading uh literature and watching television and all that kind of thing that is heterocentric, right? I've always had to translate into crow, right? So I remember uh, reading uh, Written on the Body by Jeanette Winterson yeah. and going, oh my goodness, I don't have to translate. <gasps> yeah. Quacky Moses. 
right? I still have to translate because these women are not me, but at least I don't have to translate in terms of gender, right? Yes. And sexuality. Yes. And that being quite a shock to me. So I think that's what I've done when I've read, you know, anything by the Farrers or, you know, any of that older kind of stuff. I think I've always been translating into Crow all the time. Mm. And so, you know, to, to probably to some authors' horror, all their books have become queer magic books in my head because I've just ignored those bits and gone, right, let's look at it from my worldview yeah. and have my experience of things. And so, oh, right, yeah. So you're saying that, but I would do it slightly different. I would do it like this. And so that's what I've always done, I think. Well, good for you. I mean, that's the thing. I think, but I, I've got a very, uh, I mean, the reason I actually decided to write my first book on this subject was yeah. because um apart from the people keeping on asking me like you yes know, what book would you recommend well I can't recommend that because oh, and the reason I write one. the reason that I didn't I couldn't recommend stuff was because I wasn't sure that other people were reading in that sort of filtering yeah, way that exactly. you're describing yeah. right yeah because yeah. um because I had somebody like they'd read this book um by a Wiccan author and it said um you must ask your high priestess's permission before going to guest with another coven right and so this trainee of mine got very very offended by this because she was like oh well you know who, my I'm life. grown up don't tell me what to do yeah. and I'm like yeah okay no, well yeah. my take on this is that you know it's probably a good idea to ask your high priestess's advice before you yeah. go and guest with another coven because bad things can happen and that other yeah. coven might be predatory or something and you know. also it's manners that's well, just yeah. manners yeah isn't it? but the thing is it's not so much i you know because i'm an anarchist too right so i'm like yeah. uh, i don't want people to ask my permission no 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 but i absolutely would want them to inform me that that's their plan Completely. and also you know they would be well advised to ask my yeah. advice yeah. But now, because the thing, because the thing that I was saying was different from what she'd read in a book, the wording of it, yeah, right. Well, the fact that I, I had said something different from what it said yeah. in the book, the book took priority, and that's why See? I'm like, that's yeah, we need to have books that explicitly yeah. say, yeah, 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 the and the then, things and then, that because like you might be able to translate in your head and I yeah. might be able to translate in my head and filter and go no does. I don't like that so yeah. I'm not going to do that yeah. but not everybody can do that but also we have 30 years authority yeah you know we have 30 years that tell us that we can ignore that bit if we want to yeah um and you know both yeah, but come on we were always like we were always yeah, bullshit and we're like yeah exactly, I'm ignoring yeah. that so yeah, like, yeah, so, yeah, we were, we were. having the but 30 we were years experience. Weren't we? we were encouraged by the people who trained us as well. Yes. Right. OK. And so we've always been those sort of people. But you new people coming along. There's a lot of books and there's a lot of rules in those books or things that are written as rules in those books. And I can imagine that if you've not if you're not as big a pain in the ice as me and you are. Right. And you yeah. think to do things properly. You have to follow the rules. Then everybody's books having different rules. That's going to get really confusing. Yeah. And and to me, that idea about asking your high priestess's permission, it's a bit like being at university, and you're going to go and take another course in a similar subject or the same subject with a different lecturer. You might want to mention to your lecturer, "I'm thinking about going and doing this. What do you think? Is it going to be compatible? Is it going to fit with what I'm doing with you?" You know, yeah. all that kind of thing. It's about development, isn't it? It's about um, kind of structuring your development. So if you're going to go and do something with another coven, you want to talk to your high priestess and say, um, do you know anything about these guys? Do they do things really differently than we've been doing it? Is there something I should be bearing in mind when I go over there? You know, yeah, just like that. It's just about yeah. being in control but it's of not your own like, money. It's not asking permission. In permission. No, way. because you're not going to say no, are you? No. I mean, I, I would say like Everybody's there are certain there are certain groups where I would say to that person, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that for you, and this is why. Yeah, I wouldn't do that, and I'll tell you why. But then, if that person goes to do it, you and I are both like we said, it's anarchy. So yeah. that that's entirely up to them. 
absolutely yeah. yeah no I completely agree but I get what you mean about that word permission yeah and I think but the thing for me was that you know my protestations of well this is how I do it and that's and the thing in the book is yeah. not gospel yeah fell on deaf ears we and don't have why, a gospel that's why I'm like people take books as gospel really seriously yeah yep and they don't filter necessarily of what they've read and so you do have to kind of have other books out there that are correcting the misinformation yeah completely and, and that's completely. really why or even or even giving another view of it yeah. so that people realize even if you don't look at it as correcting the information which i would agree oh. with yeah but yeah but even if you don't look at it like that if you're going to be completely neutral now and say right okay i don't know what i think about inclusive wicker or not inclusive wicker or whatever at least have some differing opinions yeah so that people realize that it's not one way or that's it yeah and that's important that's, i mean there are so many people out there on the internet and everywhere you know in real in everyday life going on and on, and on about how heterocentric wicker is yeah like yeah the more, I find it really it, the more people go on really about it the more they'll yeah. that will become the truth exactly exactly and it's like when i teach because i teach magic i don't teach wicker um and i teach witchcraft but i don't teach wicker because yeah. i wouldn't do that um for me i say to people when we start this is my 30 years experience of witchcraft and magic this is crow's version of how it works and why it works and this is how i do it if you read some books you will find things that contradict me and you will find me contradicting other things as well and it's entirely up to you but you've signed up to learn from me this is how i do it yeah and that's that's i think it's my personal relationship so here's your basis this is what I think. And these are the reasons I think it. These are the experiences I've had that have backed my thinking up. And now you take that out in the world and test it out. And if that doesn't work for you, throw it away and do it your own way. Mm. Right. But at least you've got somebody who you can talk to and who've given you kind of the bedrock of it. Yeah. Even if it's just from my point of view. Yeah. And, that, and that's a really valuable thing as well. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what Margaret did for me. You know, she taught me things, but then I was allowed to make my own opinion. Yeah. And my high priestess was the same. Like, you know, yeah. this is what I think. This is why I think it. Oh, you've got a different opinion now. Oh, that's interesting. OK, then. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, or as long tell as you me back about up, it. You know, as long yeah, as you tell back me it about up. It. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's like everything, isn't it? As long as you can tell me why. And I do a lot of talking about my experiences when I teach because I want people to understand why I came to these conclusions. Yeah. You know, it's not just some great, I'm not a guru by any stretch of the imagination, you know, and I don't want that responsibility. Thank you very much. Yeah. But what I, but I'm very clear that this is, you know, magic and witchcraft according to Crow. Yeah. And I'm very keen on like that whole approach of empowering people to definitely to do it yourself, learn their yeah. own, learn from their yeah. own experience. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I don't expect anybody to believe in gods or anything. Don't expect anybody to believe in anything, really. I'm just going to explain this is how it works as far as I'm concerned and from yeah. my experience. Yeah, and that's, that's yeah. valuable and helpful and, and good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, one of the reasons I... The other thing, the experience that I had that led me to go, right, I'm going to write a book uh, on my take on Wicca. Yeah. Because I went to a workshop at a Pagan Federation and uh, and it was like the LGBT slot at the event, right? Right, yeah. And the person who led the thing stood there and talked about all the things in Wicca that were massively heterocentric. And then everyone's kind of sitting there like really depressed. Yeah, that's really sad, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And then um, and then he's and then he said, and uh, you know what to do. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You know what to do. And everyone was kind of sitting around going. No, I don't know what I to do. I don't know what to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I thought, right, well, I'm going to write up. Write something that gives people a pathway to do yeah. something. And, and I'm sure that your book is exactly that. Here's the path. Walk along it. The bits that really resonate with you, use them. Yep. The bits that you like, but you tweak a bit if you were doing it, use that, do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's absolutely. a springboard, isn't it? It's a springboard. Yeah. 
And I know people who are using my stuff in that way. And I think that's exactly, exactly that's how I'd brilliant. want it to be used. Yeah, that's exactly it, isn't it? You want to springboard people into the way of thinking, I yeah. think. Absolutely. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, yeah, totally. Definitely that. Um, yes, what else were we going to... So, um, so you were going to tell me a bit about the Margaret Ingalls School of Witchcraft. <laughs> Well, it started, it started with me going on Instagram and I'd not been on witchy social media for my entire life. So you can imagine that that was a bit of a shock. Um, I was like, crikey Moses, there's a million people out here who are witches and call themselves witches. And some of them are doing things I have never heard of in my life. And some of them are doing things that are a bit familiar. And I thought that's really interesting. And I met a group of people, a group of women, who I got friendly with on the internet. There was no idea of the School of Witchcraft. It was just Margaret Inglis at that point. And um, I found that because I'd got a lot of experience, people would message me and go, oh, I'm in a pickle about this. What do you think I should do? And I would go, well, I don't know, but I'd do this. And they'd go, oh, how do you do that? And I go, well, I do it like that. And I'll write it down for you if you want. And then after about a month or two of this, one of them said to me, you know, Crow, I think you should be teaching people. I think you should be teaching people magic and witchcraft from your point of view of how you do it. And I was a bit like, oh, I don't know about that. But I am a teacher. Like, I can't help it. I'm, like, really irritating. I can't just tell you something. I have to tell you why. And I have to go back. I'm really annoying. So, <laughs> um, and so, and I stopped. Yeah, I know. And I'd, that's why we get on. And I'd stopped teaching because I just find it really interesting because you teach me things. And I'm like, oh, I love that. Um, so, and I'd stopped teaching English at this point and I thought yeah I could do and then I sat down and I thought right okay the first thing I'd have to do is I have to untangle Wicca from magic and witchcraft right so I kind of made a big long list of the program of study that I think people so I was like right okay what do they need to be able to do by the end of it right they need to be able to do this 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 and this and so then I then wrote backwards yeah learning outcomes yeah. Yeah, right, exactly, because I'm a geek like that. So I yep. wrote backwards and I thought, right, what's the very beginning and what's the middle and what's more complicated and actually that has to come after that because you can't do that till you know this and all that kind of stuff. And then we started, um, and I think my first lesson was about history of magic and uh, it was really interesting because I watched your um, YouTube videos after I'd taught it and I was like oh I want to add that bit that Yvonne said because that was brilliant and I've forgotten about that you know so I went away and did that um, and so it went from there and then and so then it was just you know on a Sunday me and these ladies would meet up and we would have two hours and it would be sometimes it was me teaching and the next session would be a feedback session where we all just talked about what we'd experienced or you know what we thought now we'd had to think about what we said a fortnight ago and all that and then one of them said to me crow i think we should be paying you and i was really uncomfortable about it because um you know it's not like teaching english where you go away and you get a degree and you get your teaching qualification and then the school sort out how much you're going to be paid and all that kind of thing you have to kind of put a worth on it i'm very uncomfortable with all that kind of thing um and so they started uh to give me a little bit of money and then as that progressed i started thinking actually this is really valuable and they were saying this has changed my life crow like um I didn't even think like that before and you know and they were going out and doing things that I'd not thought of and they were coming back and, and so in the end they were like I think you need to do this more you need to do more of this and I had a joke with somebody because somebody on Instagram I'd made a post and they said oh that was really informative I learned so much from your post Crow and you you know they always make me think I'm awake at two in the morning going what about what Crow said and um I said, she said, you should be teaching this. You should be teaching it properly. And I jokingly said, what? The Margaret English School of Witchcraft and Magic. Ha, ha, ha. And we both laughed about it. But then it became, actually, no, I could. And I think I should. And so then I tentatively said, I'm going to start another course. Loads of people wanted to do it. We started off doing that. Um, and then now I've got another course that's just started. And now what I've done is I've actually, the first two courses are a year long course. And I decided that was way too much. And it might be better to let people in the spirit of that idea of doing it yourself to pick and mix it. 
Mm. So I thought, right, so you've got to do 101 because this is the principles of how it works. But then after that, you could choose from all the other bits that I've done in my life. Yeah. And I can teach you that. And now I'm thinking about how I can tie the teaching sessions in with some mentoring. Like uh, I think some people would be better in a situation where we can talk one to one than in a group situation. Um, and so that's what I'm doing at the moment. Yeah. And it's an extension of the fact that I've read a lot about stuff and I've done this for a long time and that I am in my bones a teacher. And, you know, I had a dilemma about could you charge and things, but like we had a conversation about this, money's energy. I put a lot of time in. Yeah. It's not just the actual sessions. It's the, you know, people being able to message me all the time and ask me things. Um, I don't have office hours like I had when I was an English teacher. Yeah. You know, there's no... And all the oh, preparation. Um, all the yeah. preparation, all the books you've got to get out and crawl through and make sure you know what you're talking about and all that kind of stuff. And so... Um, and I'm not teaching Wicca because I wouldn't charge for teaching Wicca. I don't think you should charge for teaching Wicca. Yeah. Um, I remember one of the ladies on my course said to me, so will we be able to be initiated Wiccan at the end of this? And I was like, no, because I very carefully took out even the things I learned from Wicca. Um, I do in a different way than I would do with a coven anyway. Yeah. So I can I can extrapolate from there yeah and move on so that's kind of what I'm doing and I really enjoy it and yeah that feeling of being in the flow of things and when you get you get an example of something or you get a description of something and the other person absolutely gets it and they can turn around and say oh, so it's just like when and you're like I love that that's the best feeling in the world when that is that seamless transference of information and that they don't just get the information, they then be, it makes it their information. Mm. And they are now the authority in, in the respect of they are now authoring their own life. They are now writing their own book on magic. And that's, I love that. That's brilliant. Yeah. So who knows what will happen next, but I'm kind of, yeah, I'm open to seeing what happens. I'm not kind of, I haven't got a plan. I'm still really into the idea of you turning some of this stuff into a book. Well, I'd, I'd thought about it, but I always felt like I'm, I'm a very sociable character. And I sometimes feel that my best stuff comes out in conversation with somebody else, you know, or when I'm having to explain it to somebody else, my brain works best like that. And so I suppose my posts on Instagram are that they are yeah. that interaction, aren't they? So um, I'm thinking, I am thinking about the book we talked about, about like magic that you just do all the time. That's things that, you know, you don't have to get your athemi out for and there's no robe involved and, you know, all that kind of thing. And I'm also thinking about uh, writing about the runes because they've really gripped me. Yeah, I love your take on the runes. I think it's fantastic. Oh, thank you. That's really yeah. kind. I, I, mean, I, I, I was actually starting to think about, oh, I'm going to write a post about self-care and the runes. And then I read one of your posts about the runes and I'm like, I know nothing. <laughs> so, but I, but I think, but I don't think it's that. I think um, no, but me, it really like I just read it and I was no, just, like, I was so really blown cool. away. It was really really that's good. A big and I, for me, coming from you, Yvonne, because to me you're like you know I remember meeting you and going, oh my god, this is the person who wrote that book I've got. Like I've got your books on trees and birds and things like that from when I was like learning. And so for me, you're like that authority. So that's a big deal for me. I think with the runes, for me, I've I've gone with the basic, like what that what the rune poem says about it. And then because I'm a bit of a I have a bit of a poet brain anyway, I think I like to play with that and things come to me separately. And so I kind of let go then, you know, I let go of it and let it just come out. And yeah, yeah. I love that but approach. I, they're really the good. blueprint for the universe i think they're amazing there's yeah. so much more to them than you think initially yeah like for me each rune is like a gateway to a whole realm yeah well you said that to me and at first i was a bit like i don't know because i did that thing where i go tell me what you mean because i'm that sort of person but then i completely get it i completely get it so we were talking about um man in the anglo-saxon runes but manas yeah so yeah. that idea that it's, I mean, excited that man with a double N meant human. 
right? It, so yeah. manslaughter, mankind, it's not gendered, it isn't, it's human, yes. all of us together. So that, for a start, just was amazing for me because that is that inclusivity that we're talking about. It's not talking about any particular person, it's talking about all of us. And then the idea that it looks like double wunjo, right? So two of us together bring joy. Yeah. Like, still not specific as to gender or age or relationship with each other or anything that it's like a, it is it is that doorway to thinking of something much bigger and, yeah. and kind of opening your brain and I love that yeah so I think the rune book yeah I can feel that coming so maybe yeah. we awesome. can talk about that that would be yeah. good yeah that would be so cool um yeah and also I think you know we were talking earlier about the whole idea of charging for magical yeah. training and stuff like that and uh you know i think it's there's a difference between because as we were saying money is energy like there's a difference yeah. between each having other. a group that comes together and all learns from each other on a more yeah and and the teacher being the one who's doing most of the work yeah and therefore isn't getting that energy back from no. the situation no. yeah and so is getting paid for that teaching um in recompense for the energy expended yeah um, definitely and also somebody described it to me recently with um saying you know like so you've got this chalice crow and you've got all these jewels in it that you've collected over the years and you're just giving them away to people and when people come back and they try to put more jewels into that chalice you hold your chalice away you take it away right and sooner or later there'll be nothing in there because it's like that thing we always say about, you know, the oxygen mask on the plane. If you yeah. don't pull the oxygen mask down and look after yourself first, you can't look after anybody else. And it's exactly the same thing. I need to uh, be able to feed my family. I need to be able to pay my bills. I need to be able to contribute to my household. Um, and so I am expending energy. I am giving. And if I don't learn to receive you know, then I end up being a flat thing on the floor. I can't give any more, will I? I won't be a very good yeah. teacher if I've just expended everything. Absolutely. So, you know, it's about how much you charge, I think, and it's about how you still make it accessible to people. You know, so I've got people in my group who don't pay as much as other people do because they're in a different circumstance. I've got somebody in one of my groups who pays more so that somebody in another group can do the course who wouldn't be able to do it normally. That's beautiful. That is like real sharing. And and to me, I'm interested in that. Obviously, I have to think about my bills. But really what I'm thinking about is, you know, how how does it work best for the teaching? How does it work best to get it to as many people as really need it? And how can I make sure that I am not being uh, squeezed dry? Yeah. Or Or getting, you know, feeling demoralized about it. Yeah. And the other thing as well is, and somebody described it to me like this, and I thought it was really funny, but it's really true. You look after an expensive pair of shoes much better than you look after those £1.99 flip flops yep. from the supermarket. I was thinking of a similar thing where, um, you know, when you do, if, if you do a rune reading for someone or a tarot yep. reading and you charge like nothing or a, very little, a, only a nominal amount, um, then that person will value the tarot yeah. reading that cost them 40 quid from yeah. the professional tarot reader down the road yeah. or then they will value your mates rates or yeah exactly or, you know cheapo version exactly and also in you know you know in magic so there's some stamina and some commitment involved right yeah so if i don't charge hardly anything but i'm saying i would like you every night to spend just 5 minutes thinking this doing this right whatever because I don't charge much for my course you think oh I can't be bothered tonight if you know you are spending money and investing the money you've earned in something and I say to you I need you to do this for five minutes every night you're going to do it mm. because otherwise you're wasting your money yeah and it's, big, and it's a I big deal I mean it's like that whole thing of you know I bought a gym membership yeah and um, I'm only getting that value out of the gym membership if I actually go to the gym yeah, exactly. once a week or however, exactly. whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's the same thing. And I think there's a bit of, um, I don't know what the word is, not snobbery, but there's a bit of a, a sniffiness about 
charging to teach magic yeah um because but i don't i don't see why because if i was a driving instructor and i had 30 years of driving and learning to drive and i was going to teach you to do that then i would charge you for that i would charge you yeah. more than i charge at the moment right well the thing the um, thing is that people don't make a distinction between no. a coven situation which is yeah. like having your family around for tea yeah right? totally if my family come around for tea i don't charge them no. for the no. meal exactly right? exactly but there that. is yeah. there is an expectation that they will show up on time yeah they won't they shit on the carpet um and they'll bring a bottle of wine or something to contribute to the meal yeah and they might help you wash up afterwards and they might help you wash up or at least load the dishwasher yeah yes uh, yeah. so there's a reciprocity thing going on there exactly um and if i um you know if i go to an event where there's lots of talks and everybody's giving their one talk for free then they're getting they're getting everybody else's talk for free so everybody gets exactly. paid yeah. in kind yeah yeah. But there's still a payment happening whereas if yeah. you did say if you went to a an intensive thing and you were teaching all week like for instance reclaiming witch camps the teachers that are on those things teach the whole week right so they get paid because they're not getting they're not there as a guest um, they're not there as guests yeah. they are there working yeah for their... yeah it's work it is yeah. work it is that's work. the thing I mean, it's, it, if i go to if I go yeah. to an event and I get somebody else's talk for free and they get my talk for free, then then parity has been achieved. But yeah. For those people, they're going to that event and they're spending the whole week teaching yeah. an intensive, then they're giving yeah. away a lot of energy and therefore they yeah. should get paid for their time. Yeah, completely. That's exact that's exactly it, isn't it? Um yeah. and I think that, you know, it, it's all for me, it's the time as well, you know. Yeah. Often my classes are at night or at the weekends because that's when people can access it. Well, that's my family time. Yeah. So, you know, the I can't I feel like it would be wrong really. And it wouldn't be fair on my family either. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, you know so, I completely support that. Um, yeah, thank you. And and I really, you know, but the reason we're discussing it now is because I want other other people to yeah. understand the distinction yeah that i'm not between those two wicca. things no i'm not teaching wicca and if i decided to start my own wiccan coven down here i would not be charging the people who were my initiates because no. that's just not what it's not the same thing at all yeah exactly and like there's um there was a wonderful priestess called judy harrow um in the states and she um she said wicca operates on a pay it forward system yeah so like yeah, you know, yeah. I'm yeah. paying for my the training that I received by, by, by training other people training and they're gonna pay else. for my training by training other yeah. people. I remember when I was at teacher training, my uh, one of my head of departments on one of my placements was absolutely brilliant. And I can't remember what it was now, but he did me a huge favor. I think he let me, you know, take some class somewhere or something like that. And I said to him, I'm really grateful, you know, what can I do for you? And he said nothing. When you're a head of department. And you, one of your student teachers comes to you with a problem like this, then you pay me back. Then you do what I did and you pay me back. And I remember thinking, A, that's amazing that this man thinks I'll be a head of department one day. And B, that's exactly how I'd want to do it. And that's just like Margaret. Margaret taught me because she knew that when I, I will teach people Wicca, which is what she taught me, then I will pass that on in the same spirit as she passed it on to me. Yeah, exactly. Whereas what I'm doing now is not Wicca. No. Exactly. And I you know, you can't do that. You can't charge people for that. That's... Yeah. And, you know, like when I was nosing around your website, uh, just at the start of when we got back in touch and I was like, yeah. Um, okay, what's going on here? What's all this then? And, what's she uh, doing? Yeah. So I read all about it and I was like, oh, okay. You're not teaching Wicca. You're no, teaching something no, else. No, no. I'm not even calling it that. I explained. No that I have a Wiccan background and I also have a shamanic background. Yeah. Um, you know, but they are things that shaped me, but that's not necessarily what, I, you know, that doesn't mean that that's what I teach. Yeah. No, you're teaching your, your take on yeah. it. And, and you know, of... I like the fact you've separated out the, yeah. the two things. Well, it was tricky well. because when yeah. I was writing it, I started writing things and thought, actually, is that too Wiccan? Is that Wicca? Am I veering into Wicca? So I had to go away and like have a look and really have a think about it. And there were things that I took out, the things I took out that, no, actually, I'm not, or I'm not going to call it that. 
and I'm not going to use those words and I'm not going to use that slant. I'm going to teach this in a totally different way. Yeah. Um, and I'm quite a creative person, so I quite like to mess things around and change things up anyway. So it's quite good for me, I think. Mm. To, and it, interesting to make the distinction. Yeah. And actually, one of the things that I always say about magic is something it's based on something you said to me about writing poetry um many years ago uh because i would say that when you're doing a um so i've got this metaphor for doing a spell um and uh there's a guy called david wadsworth who came up with um the idea that that doing a spell is like a four the four stroke engine uh, on a right. motorbike uh so the four stages of the the creation in Kabbalah, yeah, he likens them to the four stages of a four-stroke engine, which is suck, squeeze, bang, and blow. Nice. And so he was from Lancashire, so you gonna know, say yeah. People from Lancashire yeah. tell it like it is. So yeah. he then, um, so then I, I thought about that, and I thought, right, okay, well, actually, it's a bit like a cider press. So you have the the suck, which is the 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 drawing down of the handle, yeah. so, which creates suction. Yep. Uh, and then you squeeze the apples together yep. Uh, yep. that's the that's the squeeze and then you yep. you press the ha press it down yep. and then that's Push the bang yep. and then you get the flow of the yeah the yep. juice and that's the blow and it reminded me of something that you said about po writing a poem being like compressing an experience yeah down until you get honey yeah. or juice out yeah. of it yeah and that's how i taught the kids to write poetry i said that it's the highest form of language it's something that can intoxicate people but it isn't the thing that you originally started off with yeah you know it's, it's i loved that condensed yeah edited yeah, condensed experience well i can't believe you remember that it that's really crazy. went in yeah it did didn't it gosh right i'll have to be careful what i say to people yeah <laughs> Well, yeah, that's so that, that yeah. the thought those two thoughts kind of coalesced into this yeah, metaphor no, about the cider together, press. Don't they? they fit together, yeah, definitely. And I and that's what you do when you make a spell, don't you? Or when you write a ritual, you know, you go with what's the feeling that I want, and then you work with words and movement and emotion until you get to the place where you wanted it to go in the first place, I think. Yeah. 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 Wow, I'm amazed that you remembered that. Yeah. If any of my students, any of my ex-students watch this, they'll just go, oh my God, she's been waffling on about poetry like this for years. <laughs> yeah, but you said that have. to me in, uh, I think, 19, it would have been 1996. So. Scary. That's scary. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, that's I always remember that. One. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it's really good. Thank you. That's nice yeah. to know you. Yeah. Yes. No, I've been carrying that little gem around with me for a while now. Uh, that blows my mind a little bit, really. But anyway. Well, you had a big effect on me, you know. <laughs> well, you had a big effect on me because I, I remember meeting you and, you know, you, like I said, you'd written books. Like, and, you know, I was like, wow, because I never felt confident in what I knew to write it down in a book. And then, you know, then... You know, I'd read those books and now this was this person and this person was like the same age as me. And so that was amazing. So I remember thinking, I really want to pick this woman's brain a lot. Like there's a, she knows things and, and it was really nice to work with you. Like, you know, when we did the, um, when we did Cakes and Wine together, I really remember, in, the one thing I really remember is I remember enjoying doing that brain wrestling, you know, Right, yeah. okay, so if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it properly, okay? And how, let's bring to bear everything we both know and all of our experiences in this, and let's see if we can find a way of doing this that's not gonna give anybody in this circle the wrong idea. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I really enjoyed that. I love that kind of, and we both, we do it now. We do that brain sparking thing where I totally I'll do. go away now and think of all the things you've said and go oh that's really true and start making a list for next time I speak to you <laughs> that's so cool true. Oh. sorry I know I know that's how I feel so that yeah definitely I'm really glad that we kind of had this conversation and that we've can we've found each other again yeah this is fantastic Make a big deal yeah exactly it yeah. really is it's been fantastic mm -hmm.
Right. And it makes me feel like I've come home a little bit as well, which is really nice after being off in the wilderness for a long time. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, yes. definitely. You've been missed. Oh, well, thank you. Well, you've been missed as well. So, yeah. And, and especially, you know, Margaret dying, that left a huge hole for me. Yeah. Because she was my connection. She was like my umbilical cord to everybody and the Wiccan community and all that kind of thing. And so after that, it was quite difficult for me, I think. Yeah. 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 It was, that was a huge thing. Yeah, still no. I mean, it'll be 22 years in April that she's been dead. Wow. And I still go, how on earth have I survived this long without her? And then when I say that, I hear her in my voice said, because I didn't go anywhere, Carl. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, but you know, it's that thing. And that's been an amazing thing about teaching, remembering conversations I've had with Marga when I'm teaching other people about similar things. Mm. Really made her come back a little bit for me. I'm sure she's still, you know, keeping an eye on you from somewhere. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, you don't get to use her name without her paying attention. <laughs> that's true well I definitely feel that you know like like I said because I was um I was trying to gather some memories together of her and yeah. and it was so it was googling her name it that was her it was made her. me stumble she across you so there you go yeah yeah she's still out there she's like my little flag isn't she in the yeah. universe mm. yeah that's nice I like that well there's you know she's always been that sort of person anyway who would be wanting to get you connected with people like she paid every year for one of us to go to pagan weekend one of yeah. her in this year to go to pagan weekend because we were all students and so we couldn't afford it and she would take we'd take turns and like one of us would go to pagan weekend and then the other three would get to go to the pagan conference with her you know like so you know it was the wow. pagan federation conference yeah. yeah so that's what she did her and duncan did that every time so Amazing. you know it's it she's always been that person who's linked me to a wider yeah community I think. that is so generous as well isn't it That's yeah yeah fantastic. amazing yeah well yeah. she paid for my they paid for my glasses I broke my glasses before my finals and I had no money at all and my parents didn't have any money at all and my coven bought me a new pair of glasses wow. for my final. That's so awesome. we really were they're like family you know yeah yeah I mean like all my people who've been in my covens are like we're still in touch and yeah it's lovely yeah it's really, really important yeah. yeah so I'm glad that we have this and it's yeah. and it makes perfect sense that it's Margaret that reminded me that you existed and reminded you that I existed so yes it's fantastic perfect Good. yes yeah. right so I'm looking okay. forward to seeing what projects you get up to next which is very yeah. exciting well we'll have a conversation about those book ideas yeah uh, maybe maybe when it's spring and I'm a bit more awake yeah <laughs> yeah it's all hibernating through the lockdown yeah yeah badger oh badger yeah. Yeah. at the moment i think but yeah yeah, yeah. that'd be great so yeah okay, that's been lovely and yeah. uh thanks so much for coming on the show it was brilliant yeah well thank you very much for having me i'm amazed that somebody wants to listen to my wittering <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic it's great okay. great thank you yeah thank you mm -hmm.